This podcast is presented by Rabbi Peretz Muchkin, speaking to the millennial generation. Hello, everyone. Welcome to the Rabbi Peretz podcast. I, uh, I'm here with a returnee to the Rabbi Peretz podcast, Laura Atwil, my, uh, my wonderful friend and community member. Welcome. Hi. Thank you for having me. Of course, um, if anybody wants to know some of Laura's story, and it's amazing, maybe we'll go into it, but there is a previous podcast, so they can go search up uh, uh, about your incredible talents and the, your bakery in San Francisco and all the beautiful parts of how we met. I think it was a Hanukkah podcast, so really good stuff. Yeah, it was Hanukkah podcast, I guess number 40-something. <laughs> well, I will say that something new has happened in your life. Um, and I really would love to process that with you. Mm -hmm. And the new is, is that you hosted a Shabbat dinner in your house this past week. Yeah, no, it was like, it was uh, really great. Um, it was really important for me to make it very, not just beautiful, but very filled with, um, with me in it, you know? And I was reading something about how putting beauties, beauty in like whatever we we do for a Shabbat dinner, how how important it is um, in Judaism to like to specifically pick things that we think are beautiful. Um, so yeah, it was very special. You know, I tried to only make events. I mean, on a regular basis, the majority of my events should be things that the people who come to them could replicate at their at their in their own life. Because if I keep making events that you can't replicate, then it's like it's great, but where's the real growth going to come from? For example, if my main um, structure was around the synagogue, you're not expecting anybody to then go and replicate that. You're expecting to keep coming to you. But mm -hmm. I've always felt that there's a large majority of Jewish people that their only Judaism they'll have is if they show up to an event now and again. But in their own homes, they really don't have anything. And I usually, these are the people I find and put up a mezuzah and hang out with them. And it's, and it's not, no fault of their own. It's just how it is, you know? And so when I see somebody in the community who's replicated something that we've done, like create a Shabbat dinner and yours is stunning. So you could imagine that uh, you're using your artistic talents, you're using your creativity, you're connecting to your friends and your community and you're hosting at your house. That to me is the ultimate uh, sign of love and connection and respect and growth because it, it takes it beyond just a learning relationship, which is ultimately my goal, which is to have a relationship where the other person's actually having relevant beneficial elements to their life. So uh, more power and blessings to you. I wanted to share also, which is like kind of the, um, the magical part of like um, getting ready for Shabbat is that the week um, before Shabbat, so I had a little bit of a, I had a little bit of an Hosh Kodesh event with some of my girlfriends and uh, we we're talking about this whole thing about the double month of Adar, which basically mean like double joy. And when we're doing this little meeting, I pretty much had an employee that gave me um, his notice. He quit. So suddenly I was filled with a big amount of like anxiety and stress. And I think my way to like cope with all that and try to figure out how I was going <laughs> to figure, figure this out, I think it was to set up my Shabbat table very early in the week. So I literally set it up on Tuesday. <laughs> On Tuesday, I had like everything set up pretty much. Um, and I think it was kind of a way for me to stay connected to um, the idea that there's something more. It's not just my everyday life, but more like the big picture. And I think organizing this Shabbat dinner was also a way to um, tune in with that. That's why it was like a very special. And the other reason why it was very special is because I mean, it's really easy to like build a persona every day of like who you are, but I feel like whatever the style of like Shabbat you set up, it just like says a lot about who you truly are and people that truly know me, like they will say, yeah, Laura, she likes beautiful thing, but she is also someone can like, she likes simple, like simple, but like beautiful, not like tacky. And I think um, this Shabbat, it was also about that. It was also about removing the persona and being like more tuned in with 
like the real person I am. <laughs> so that's the reason why, yeah, like it was a very, very special Shabbat. And I, I was really glad that I was able to fully, <laughs> to fully um, get in the Shabbat mode, like the entire week. And on Friday, just before the dinner, I actually had a lot of interviews with new people and I was able to hire new people from my business. So I was like, okay, <laughs> this is what it brought it came me. came together. It came together because it always come together at the end. And I think this idea of like, I'm going to do Shabbat no matter what. And on top of it, I didn't have people to cover me at the bakery on Friday. And I told my team, I'm like, we're going to just close earlier, but I'm not canceling this thing. <laughs> so we closed the bakery earlier that day. And I, I saw it as a sign. Maybe it was just like, okay, maybe you need the bakery to be completely closed at two o'clock so that you can completely focus on that and just be completely relaxed and get in the spirit of Shabbat. Wow. Well, I'm going to tie it together for you because you you are, you know, explaining the result of an incredible experience. Um, and, and, I, and I think that it really fits in. So sometimes people ask me, like, why Shabbat has to be the way it is, like, you know, full 24 hours and all that stuff. And I'll actually answer them something similar to the first part that you spoke about, which is it carries over into the other days of your week. Like you went out and like set up your table uh, like a few days in advance, but think about like the calm it brought to you every day, knowing like I'm opening up my house, the table is set. It's very common for people to set up their table Thursday night because, you know, they just want the house to feel that way. And it's actually part of like Jewish tradition to set up the table as early as possible. So you're like a natural Jewish intuitive person. You know, it doesn't, you don't need to grow up in a Hasidic household to, 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 to have that intuition. It's part of your DNA. It's part of who we are as Jews that we, we, we know that when you prepare for something and when you have it there, it sets the intention and it brings a mindful presence to what's going to happen. And you need that for the second part. You need that for opening yourself up. You're after all, people are going to be coming into your house and they're going to be enjoying to meet a new, a deeper layer of yourself, right? A, a deeper part of yourself. And that layer and that part of yourself is really so unique to share with others. And, you know, it's vulnerable in the beginning, but eventually like, wow, I'm really actually relearning how to be myself in front of the people that know me by external things. Now those are stripped away and they can like feel my presence and my space. So, so important that you did this. So, so beautiful. So I, I really can appreciate that journey. And, and, and of course things work out when you do things intentionally and mindfully, you know, things work out in other areas as well. But there's also like another thing that I did, which was really special. I mean, you, you know, you've known me for quite some time now. You know, I always make a dessert for Shabbat. I mean, I own a bakery, so like, but it's the first time ever that I hosted people and actually didn't make any desserts. Every dessert that I had, it was like sourced by like somewhere else. The only thing that I was actually made was the challah that I made at my store. And I actually made the blessing on it and everything, but that was the only thing. And I actually cooked, which is, I mean, people that know me, they're like, oh yeah, Laura, she doesn't, she doesn't like to cook. And I did cook. And my friend, they were like, they're like, Laura, this, this is a lie. You know how to cook. You feel right. like lying to us. And I'm like, no, <laughs> here's the thing. You have access tonight to something that really not that many people have access. You usually have access to my like pastries, which is the way I express my art, but it's not really fully who I am. And if I host you in my house and I make you food, like actual food, not pastries, it just says a lot. So in the symbolic of like not having any dessert that I made, it was, I don't know, I, for me, it was a big deal. It was like, I think it's the first time in probably like nine years that I, yeah, that I have people over without making any desserts. And um, it just like felt really good. And I feel like I was really able to to really connect with people and um and the other thing is um so I by the way bravo bravo <laughs> i don't want to stop you so like this but yes you know cooking making it happen putting in the effort uh it's real 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 energy so anybody who's listening is going like this girl just like uh you know setting the bar really high and it's true you do you put yourself into things and and that's beautiful but yeah, it was, I mean, it was lovely. And I basically just cooked stuff that remind me of my my roots. What I So it was a whole Moroccan like dishes because my dad is from Morocco. So it was thing that I will eat as a kid that my grandma will make. So it was a mix of all that. 
And I think people really uh, enjoyed it. And I really tried to do it my style. Um, by doing my style, I also did something that I know you're not supposed to do. And I actually would want to know more why you're not supposed to do it. But um, there was like some men around my table, but I was still the one that did the kiddush like prayer. So I know usually mm -hmm. it's as a woman you're not supposed to be like taking care of that part I guess for me it was important because it's um it was my home and I don't have a have a husband yet so I guess it was important that it came from me but I actually wanted to know more about about that because I was really curious about this um this aspect well you know so let's let's uh break it down kiddush is when you you begin the meal we sing Shalom Aleichem, uh, we, which is about connecting to angel-like energy, which is essentially the transference of energy. Angels in Hebrew are called messengers, and their whole persona is to be couriers of energy. So since Friday night, it's very difficult to like get this internal self-worth fully activated. Your real self, as you said, the side of you that others don't see, that comes out on Shabbat. You know, it's, it's supposed to come out in Shabbat. Uh, so we sing Shalom Aleichem, representing that, that it takes a little bit of angel-like messenger, courier energy, like I need to receive something deeper. And this concept all fits into the general theme of Shabbat, which is the intersection of worlds. There's the, the, the character, which represents where God connects to creation, or where one human being connects to a young, another human being, is called in Kabbalah Malchut. Malchut is, you could say, sovereignty or kingship, but it's really creating the template for connection, the dignity of interaction. And the first thing you got to really do before you have a meal, which is based on interaction with food, with others, with yourself, with the day of the week, with Shabbat, with weekday, is to create space, like to create a moment of space of where we can interact. And that's what Kiddush is. Kiddush is like this duality of making space and aligning to something deeper. That's what really holiness ultimately is not just holy, it's better than something else. That's not what holiness means. Holiness means alignment that's connected to something larger and deeper. And to connect to that and to align with that, you need to create space. So Kiddush is about making this type of space. And when one makes that type of space, it's, it's about engaging essentially into the feminine aspect of God, which is the meeting point of Malchut. So without going into a full Kabbalah class on this feminine energy, essentially, this is why anyone can make Kiddush. But the, the emphasis is on the masculine sort of shedding their full masculinity and using the Kiddush as a vessel filled with wine representing that they are now interacting with the feminine. So it isn't that you can't, it's that a man should. So you in your own home making Kiddush, it's a, it's a beautiful thing. You created space in your life and for, and for others. And the idea that a man has to do it on their own is independent of that you can create that space and that holiness in your own life. So the idea of like a woman shouldn't do it for men it's not because of the lack within the woman. It's because of the man's job to do it and to, to access the feminine, to create that space. So you, uh, you did nothing wrong. You're wonderful. And, uh, and, you, and you know exactly how to create that type of feminine space that, uh, that others can, can bask in and glory in. And, uh, and that's really what Shabbat is about. It's the divine feminine, the Shekhinah, and representing the interaction of universes. And that's why in the feminine physical reality, that's what we, why do babies come specifically from women? It's not just having a womb. The womb is the metaphor and the representation of the interaction of universes. So this is really what's happening Friday night as well. There's one layer, it's just weekday to a day of rest. Or you could say that Shabbat represents holistic you know, alignment and interconnectivity and a force of things coming together. And the way we experience that is by satiating the body, activating pleasure sensors and creating the space for the real you to present. Because I'm sure after you make Kiddush and ate some challah and had some delicious food representing your heritage and your spirituality and newfound growth, all of a sudden the real you is starting to flow and people all of a sudden meet this like, Vi vibrant side to who you are. So it's very gracious of you to say it in a form of a question, but it really is beautiful the way it, the way you did it is creating that space. In the future, you could just add Kiddush cups to everybody. This is why when I make my table and I pour wine for myself, I ask everybody to pour wine for themselves 
so that they can all feel like they're also making the kiddush, making the space. So you're, you're, you're on it. We, um, we also did the Shalom Aleichem. And I have to say, this is like something that I was not really doing when I was living in, in France. I mean, I, I was not really good at knowing everything. But coming to your Shabbat table, I got, I got used to it to a point that I was so used to like singing the Shalom Aleichem that, I, that we've been um, with my friend Ari, which was the little bit of a co-host for this dinner. We've been um, doing this Shalom Aleichem. We've been doing it on our guitar, both of us. <laughs> So it's kind of our it's kind of our signature now to our Shabbat that we host. It's like we start with that. And I have to say it really like it really starts setting the tone because first everybody come in, everybody's chatting, and then we're like, okay, now is the time. <laughs> we're gonna all sing together. And it just really, as you said, it really just like bring this beautiful energy because suddenly, like now when I sing it, it just I'm in my I'm in a bubble. I'm in my zone. I'm, and I just feel like I'm completely getting into the Shabbat spirit. It just like gets <laughs> in me. And it's like really beautiful. It's a, it's a really different energy. And especially, I have to say, when you host it, when it's in your home, it's a completely different thing. It's a completely different feeling because it's just, it takes you to a different, a different place, a different level. I, I agree. I agree. There's something about like, you experience Shabbat in other places and it's definitely amazing, but it's not until you, you know, put it together and you're like, you're ha essentially having a, a refined dinner place. You're learning how to, how to have like a, a dinner that's not just, you know, about just uh, talking and chit chatting and, and catching up. It's really, you're, you're trying, you're ultimately creating an organic space for spiritual conversation, refined conversation. And it's really healing to have, I don't want to call it adulting, but it's really healing to have Shabbos in a structured space of good food and good environment and good people because it really changes of what of what the evening is all about, it really changes of what your life is all about. And that's real reason why it carries over during the week, because you start thinking like that experience, it's not just a manufactured experience that happens Thanksgiving once a week. It happens every Friday night. Every week, yeah. there's an opportunity to elevate my interaction with food more intentional and cultural and it's connected to my roots and you know whether it's gefilte fish or whether what was a good uh, moroccan dish so i made uh, i made chicken with olives and lemon okay so <laughs> whether you whether you make something that take that the taste buds takes you back to your 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 parents house or your to your heritage or whether it's uh, something uh, ashkenazic or 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 challah you know just the presence of something different it, it just opens up a new neural pathway for yourself, a new way to, to enlighten how, how I see myself in regards to food and people. And we're talking about really, you created a space to open yourself up and it happened. There's nothing more beautiful than that. I have to say also like the fact that you, cause it, I feel like having, so I had like 12 people over, usually for, for that amount of people, I would think, okay, paper plate or whatever. I was like, no, 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 we're not doing the paper plate. We're doing the real plate and we're doing a, 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 a glass for water, a glass for wine. And we're like, really? <laughs> and it's so interesting because when you're sitting at this table and you have this kind of like set up, you feel like a queen. <laughs> you're yeah. like, you feel like you're part of like a royalty or something. It just has right. this, like this vibe to it that is very special. And I, I mean, I've went to dinners like that before, but hosting one, it just like it has this very interesting effect. And it, it's true. Like after Shabbat, I was still in this like mindset for a few more days. And now I'm like, oh, now I'm looking forward to the next one that I'm going to be hosting. And also it, it, it inspired everybody that was at the table. They're like, oh, I think I want to start hosting because it's like it's so nice. Yeah. Um, so it just suddenly feels good because we're like part of this group now. Where we like invite each other and it's just like every person has a different style and it just feels so special and it just makes you like look forward to the to Friday. You're right. Every, you're right. Every element happens. Every like, like it, it was a huge sacrifice for Miriam and I, those are those years to, to set up a table for a hundred people and have glass and everything real and all that. And, but we were like, you know, this is the real subliminal message. Like this is where the magic happens is in the effort. You know, the magic doesn't happen because we're getting together. The, that works. 
excuse me, but the real depth is, is a, this effort that we put into the details. So we should feel like a queen and king. And what does that mean to feel like a king and queen? It's like healing for the fact that these, these concepts are in our world, the concept of being a leader, being a president, being a king, being, and, and, and every person has an element of leadership in them, but they don't get to experience it unless they get elected to office or run a company or become CEO. And, but that's not the only way to experience dignity and sovereignty and kingship and royalty. That's, it's within you to experience it. And we experience it on Shabbat when we create that environment for who we're supposed to be. And when you feel that way, it changes your perception of yourself. You are a more dignified person. You have more to offer to your life. So Shabbat for the Jewish people is like, they went through 2000 years, our ancestors, of a lot of challenges. But yet, for the most of them, came Friday night, they took themselves out of their difficulties, out of their challenges, and felt their inner royalty, felt their inner dignity, and can you imagine what type of healing? This is why the, the great poet uh, Achad Am says more than the Jews kept Shabbat, Shabbat kept the Jews. Like what kept us going was our ability to really feel the essence of our being, which doesn't come out when you're struggling. Yeah, no, it doesn't. It's it's true. Like the that's exactly what I was like trying to tune in with. Like the essence of your your being. It's exactly that. Because um, it's really easy to get caught in like little problems, especially when you own a business or honestly any problem and, and just connecting with like something else, it just like, it takes you somewhere else. It just, um, and you, and then you, you're ready to start your week again be like, okay, what, what, what is the energy that I have now that I can bring to my, to my week, uh, to make it better, to make it beautiful and to be like calm and to be confident that everything is going to be okay. <laughs> and it's all beautiful. part of a big plan. <laughs> it's beautiful. I just want to finish off with this idea that you said you, in the beginning, you mentioned Adar happening this month. This month is an opportune time to start something new. And, and the reason is, is because historically, anything that started in this month came to fruition. That's our tradition as Jewish people, that in this month has the power for things to work out. There's a natural joy and a historical uh, trust that success happened and will happen. So because you started in Nadar, I'm sure the blessing of continuum and success is going to be there for you. And I just want to wish you, you know, strength to strength and tons of growth because this is inspirational. And I hope people listening to this feel inspired to do this as well with their friends in their house, because that's the goal. If you keep having to rely on rabbis and synagogues, I know it's not good for business for me to say that, but if we keep having to rely on them, it's, it's, it's a limited enterprise. But if people are doing it in their own home and creating authenticity with their own background and culture, we can expect, you know, incredible beauty for the future of our, of our people. Amen. <laughs> 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 amazing well thank you for coming on lord to the rabbi parrots podcast I'm, I feel so like, nice. I'm so uh, glad to be part of this celebration i think it's yeah great. you know it's 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 uh i i trying to celebrate my 40th birthday the only way i know how you know with with study and inspiring uh conversation and and connecting to all the people that i love and i'm connected to in my community and then just sharing that love with the world because i think at 40 it's time to integrate all the joy and the way you integrate, especially like me, when you're trying to also integrate with the world around you is to share. And that's one of the deep ways of doing it and sharing your Shabbat table and sharing your real sense with people in a safe space that you created in your house. That's how you create integration. So this is what I'm trying to do for my 40th. And I'm so uh, happy that you were able to do that with me. Well, I'm so glad. All right. Lots of love. Hey. <laughs>